what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to talk about a concept called failable initializers so here we are on apple's developer documentation website and actually it looks like this post is from 2014 so this is a pretty old concept but it doesn't get that much coverage so i figured i'd make a video about it but it's this notion that an initializer may initialize an object or it might return nil if it fails to initialize it. So here they've got an example about, uh, you know, a fillable initializer with an NS image. And to here they've got a brief example where it's an init with a question mark. So we're gonna take a look at, you know, where Apple uses this, uh, how you would implement your own, and frankly, why you should care and, you know, want to even implement this. So. First things first, make sure you destroy the like button as always for the YouTube algorithm, helps out quite a bit. If you're new to the channel, welcome, hit subscribe, get extra ready, get pumped. Let's talk about some failable initializers. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. Head on over to check out the newly launched TikTok and Swift UI courses. Learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time, quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode, coming up here to File, and we wanna create a playground. So I'm gonna to go to New, Playground, and we can stick with a blank template. And we're gonna go ahead and call this playground Optional Init. Go ahead and create it, save it wherever you like. We're going to start by expanding our window. And before we write our own failable initializers, let's take a look at one that actually Apple has already provided for us and what the heck a failable optional initializer is. So cool, we're going to delete that string. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to create a URL. So for those of you that have used URL, you can create it with a string and you pass in a string. And actually, this constructor of a URL, if we start typing in this lowercase URL, you'll see its type here is URL optional, hence the question mark. But what's strange is, why does this return optional? Well, the reason is pretty simple. Uh, if we pass in an invalid string here, we can't create a valid URL, therefore it's going to be nil. If we passed in something like HTTPS, uh, you know, apple.com, this would be valid. So, you know, oftentimes you might see URLs written as, you know, guard let URL with an else and a return just to validate that the URL initializer here succeeds. Now what Apple's actually doing here, if we hold command, click on this and hit jump to definition, you'll see in the definition here, here's the initializer we're calling and its signature is init with a question mark and then the string. And if we read the comment that Apple's left here, it says returns nil if a URL cannot be formed with the string. For example, if the string contains characters that are illegal in a URL uh, or is an empty string. So what they're saying here is if you pass in an invalid string, we're gonna give you nil back. If you pass in a valid string, we'll give you a valid URL back. So this concept of a failable initializer is really powerful if you wanna basically uh, ensure that the user passes in something valid, but you know you have a situation where you can pass in a string and you can't really enforce that they passed in a correct string. So we're gonna do our own example of this. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's create a struct called version. And a basic version has three components in it. So we're gonna say 12.2.3. This first version here, this first number here in this version, 12 is considered the major version the two would be minor and the three would be a patch. So in here, we're gonna say major is an integer, minor is an integer, and the third one, which is patch, is also an integer. And if we wanted to create an instance of our version, so let's say let version is a version, we would just pass in values here, so it's a 12, two, and three. So that's all simple and good to go. What if we wanted the user or the developer to be able to pass in a string into the version and from that string we would basically figure out you know what the major minor and patch is and assign it you know ourselves so we would add on here an init which would have an optional uh, return value so question mark and it would take in a string just like that now what we need to now you know take care of is what if the user passes in an empty string or what if the user passes in ABC? That's not a proper version. 
So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna write in a custom initializer that is failable and we're gonna check all of our edge cases. So the first thing in here that we wanna go ahead and do is we're gonna assume that we're requiring the user to pass in something with two dots and these three numbers. So we're gonna first take the string and we are going to split up the components in by the uh, dot. So we're gonna say components is string components separated by the period. Now, once we separate it by the period, we should have three numbers. So now we're gonna say guard components dot count is three. Otherwise, we're gonna return. All right, we're gonna return nil otherwise, meaning you know we fail to initialize. Okay, so now that we know we have three components, we need to convert these three components into three numbers because it might be you know a dot b dot c and we can't say a b c is a version so we can now actually say is let numbers equals components dot compact map and we're going to take each of the characters for each component and try to convert it to an integer now once we've done that we still need to make sure that we have three valid numbers because if we weren't able to convert, let's say an A to a integer, you know, this is gonna fail right here in the compact map. Now that we've gone ahead and validated that we have three numbers, we can start assigning. So we are going to say self.major is numbers, the first number, the minor will be the second number, hence index one, and the patch is gonna be the third number, hence index two. So let's go ahead and try to create this version struct now with a string. So I am going to say let's version one is a version and we're gonna pass an a.b.c and I'm gonna copy and paste this. Here we're gonna say version two and I am going to say in this case 32.12.17 and let's go ahead and print both of these out. So we're gonna say version one, and we're also gonna print out version two. Now you might see warnings here because we're trying to print out something that might be optional, so nil. We can ignore these, and let's just go ahead and hit this play button here. You can open up this bottom panel by hitting command shift Y. Sometimes playgrounds are a little slow, so just bear with it here. Uh, if it's you know too slow, we can close Xcode and reopen it, but let's take a look at what we have here now. So the first print is giving us nil, right? Because we passed an a.b.c, and if we look at our code, we're splitting it by the dot, and we definitely have three components because we would have a, b, and c. But then we try to convert those to integers, and we would not be able to get three numbers, therefore it would come into this guard else and return nil, hence we were not able to initialize a version. Now in this second case, we're saying 12 dot, uh, rather 32.12.17. And if we look at when our print came out here, we have a major version that's 32, the minor is 12, and the patch is 17. So we were successfully able to split apart the string by the dots, uh, convert each element to a number, an int, and then assign them properly. So that's the premise of a failable initializer where you know, you may or may not be able to initialize an object with the given input. Now we've used a string here as just an example. I don't wanna, you know, bring across the misconception that it has to be a string. Uh, you can do this with a variety of cases. A string was just the easiest one to give an example for. Let's say you wanna pass in JSON in here that you get from an API call and create a, you know, a model from it. You can definitely do that. And you can have it be int, uh, init optional. Now, before we wrap up here, one thing that I do want to do is we're going to simplify this logic. So here we have created components from the string, splitting it by the dot. But we, what we could actually also do here is we can take this dot compact map and we can actually stick it at the end here. And I can get rid of this second guard. And we can actually call this right here numbers and change this to numbers as well. So what we're doing here is not only are we splitting the string by the period, we're also converting it or trying to convert it to an integer. And this compact map will basically also get rid of any invalid characters. So any spaces or ABC, 
uh, commas, etc. And our numbers should basically be three. We have it exactly equal to three because let's do another example. Let's say we had uh, another version here with a, let's say, dot 21. This is actually now invalid because we now are going to have four numbers. So if we go ahead and print that out there, let me go ahead and hit pause and hit this play button one more time, you'll see that the third one actually is also nil. And the reason is, is because we've hardcore said here, it needs to be three numbers. It cannot be more, it cannot be less. Now what you could do is you could say this is greater than or equal to three. That way it'll just, you know, pick up on the first three numbers here, ignoring the fourth. Let me go ahead and change up these numbers. We'll say seven and let's say five. And let's go ahead and hit pause and play one more time. And now you'll see that the third one here will, valid, will be valid. We'll pick up five, seven, and 23, simply ignoring the fourth number here. So that's basically failable initializers in a nutshell. They're actually used fairly commonly, uh, but they don't get you know, as much... Uh, as much coverage as I think they kind of should. So um, the other last thing I'll call out here is, of course, to use these, you would need to say, you know, guard let uh, if you wanted to unwrap them upon initialization. Now, both of these are going to be non-optional because uh, they're valid inputs. So we won't come into the return. You'll notice here the prints are optional at the moment. If we go ahead and hit run again, we'll just see the proper thing get printed out here. Looks like we have an error. Uh, looks like we're not in a, in a function here. So let's put this whole thing in a func. We'll say this is go. And then down here, I'm just gonna call go since we're in a playground. Go ahead and hit pause and play this one more time. And now you see that we get a version here, a version of the third line here. And the first one is in fact nil. So hopefully that's a good primer as to what fillable initializers are. Um, they're called fillable initializers or optional initializers or constructors. Pretty simple concept. If you haven't done so already, make sure you destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out quite a bit. Comment down below if you have any questions, feedback, concerns. Love hearing from you guys. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe for daily iOS Swift related uploads. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.